Carefully check the switch for any damage that may have occurred during shipping or while the switch was in storage. If any damage has occurred, proceed to the section in the instruction manual on maintenance and adjustments and perform the adjustments recommended for this type of switch. Carefully open the crate, removing the front, back, top, and both sides. Leave the switch bolted to the bottom of the crate at this time. Remove the small crate containing the hardware and all the mounting brackets and associated equipment. Inside this crate, you will find the instructions for installing this switch. The instructions and installation drawing will be in an envelope that will be covered in plastic to keep it waterproof. Remove the instructions and drawing, read carefully, and follow them during installation of this switch. The first step is to locate the area on the pole where the switch will be mounted and mark where the two mounting holes will be drilled on the pole. Drill the two mounting holes. Next, install a three-quarter inch bolt with a bearing plate washer on one end loosely in the bottom hole. At this time, do not install the washer and bolt on the top hole. The next step will be to attach the slings to the lifting angles that are included specifically for lifting the switch. This will help balance the switch and help it lift fairly straight. Once tension is put on the line, unbolt the switch from the crate. Tie a hand line to one of the outside phases of the switch. This tag line will help you control the switch when it is being lifted. Slowly lift the switch out of the crate and up to the top of the pole for mounting. Mount the switch by letting the bottom mounting hole slot rest on the bottom bolt. Make sure the pole bearing plate, square washer, is between the pole mounting bracket and the bolt head. Next, install the top mounting bolt and washer through the top hole. Tighten both bolts securing the switch to the pole. Remove the sling and the lifting brackets from the switch. After the switch is installed, these lifting angles must be removed to ensure the proper BIL of the switch. Further stabilize the switch with the two small brackets to both sides of the pole with lag screws. Install the first section of control pipe. Connect the clevis to the drive lever on the switch with a pin and cotter pin. Locate this drive lever location using your installation drawings. Now we will install the first set of steady levers. Attach the steady lever to the other end of the first section of pipe. Place the steady lever at about a 45 degree angle and mark on the pole where you drill the top hole for the steady lever. Drill a hole where you made the mark on the pole for the first bolt of the steady lever. Put a bolt through the hole and tighten the top bolt of the steady lever onto the pole. Use a lag screw in the second hole of the steady lever. Take up the second section of pipe. Install it into the coupling. Tighten the clamps and the piercing screws. Install the second steady lever in the same manner as you installed the first one. Position the handle at the height above the ground where you wish it to be installed and mark the pole for the two holes for mounting the handle. Drill the mounting holes for the handle. Mount the handle with the two through bolts, but do not tighten them down at this time. Check the length of control pipe that is needed from the handle up to the first coupling and mark the control pipe. Now, remove the control pipe 
and cut it at the mark you just made. Install the piece of control pipe that you have just cut, tightening the top connections of the coupling and the piercing screw. Slip the ground strap over the pipe and tighten it. Moving the handle outward, taking the handle off, slip the coupling of the handle onto the pipe. Then replace the handle back onto the pole. Tighten the bolt securing the handle to the pole. Next, place a bolt through the top hole of the mounting plate where the lock would go. With the switch fully closed, push the handle up against the bolt and tighten the clamp bolts around the pipe. Now, connect the handle ground strap to the driven ground and the down ground on the pole. Next, connect the ground strap to the switch handle plate. The next step is to remove the bolt and close the switch handle all the way up. This will provide enough over torque on the switch. Remove the plastic ties which hold the switch blades closed by simply cutting them off. Now, open and close the switch to ensure that the switch is opening and closing properly. Make certain that every time it is closed, it will close in completely against its stops. Now tighten the piercing screws on the handle clevis. This concludes the installation of the AB Chance D7 air brake switch.